treaty principles bill is in place uh, because we disagree with the way the public service has been interpreting the treaty for the last 30 years. We all live in this country, we all have the consequences of our constitutional documents interpretation and after 50 years of Parliament saying there were principles but being silent about it, that silence is being broken and that is an incredibly important exercise. This is a country based on equal rights for each and every citizen no matter what your background. Now if people want to frame that as attacking Māori, what they're really saying is that Māori is somehow different and, and won't succeed in a world where you start with equal rights. Um, it may be that they're ignoring another possibility that we need to do far better um, in public services, but you can actually do that uh, without having to be discriminatory. We've seen as recently as last week in Hawke's Bay, uh, government departments using just one statistical indicator, a person's ethnic background, to decide how to allocate public services. This government is committed to a social investment model and sound use of data in all it does in order that we make sure the people who really have the greatest need uh, are those that are getting the help. And it's important that rather than defaulting uh, to ethnicity as a decider of which services are allocated, how and when, uh, that we dig into the true causes of inequity and truly help those in the greatest need. For example, it's often stated that there's a difference in life expectancy for Māori and non-Māori. That is absolutely true. But the question is, why is that the first lens that you use? There's many other interesting and useful statistics, such as the quality of housing, uh, living in urban versus rural, having high or low incomes, and perhaps having some uh, lifestyle choices that affect your health and your longevity. Those should also be taken into account so that we can help all the people, uh, not just those on the basis of ethnicity. I don't think anyone's disputing the fact that if you take the average Maori life expectancy and the average non-Maori life expectancy there's about a seven year gap. That's No one's disputing that, we know that. Uh, the challenge is, is it the best way to come at these differences to divide people by their ethnic background? You may find that there are other indicators, you know, the obvious example um, is we know that poor housing leads to respiratory diseases people that are Māori and people that are non-Māori suffer from that problem. The important thing about taking that observation is it allows us to actually do something about the problem. It's also much less divisive to deliver services on the basis of need not race. I'm really proud that we're doing this as a government. Uh, it's a step towards the kind of country that New Zealand can and should be. Uh, one that has many different cultures, people from many different backgrounds and a will to make sure that opportunity is equal and all of those backgrounds uh, are celebrated equally. Uh, what we want is for each and every person to flourish in their own way rather than introducing arbitrary uh, differentiation uh, based on who a person's ancestors were. All right, thank you very much, guys. See you later.